These trees weren't just odd looking. One of their strangest traits was their very shallow root system, right ward and kirschvink. They grew tall and fell over quite easily. So imagine, then, these stands of towering, fern-like plants mostly growing in swamps. The air is warm and moist, and the land, Europe, the Americas, and Africa were at the time one continuous mass, is covered by millions, no, billions, of trees that are sucking carbon from the air, growing, aging, dying, falling, and releasing oxygen. This is a world littered with dead trees piling on top of each other. But when those trees died, the bacteria, fungi, and other microbes that today would have chewed the dead wood into smaller and smaller bits were missing, or as Ward and Kirschvink put it, they were not yet present. Bacteria existed, of course, but microbes that could ingest lignin and cellulose, the key wood eaters, had yet to evolve. It's a curious mismatch. Food to eat but no eaters to eat it. And so enormous loads of wood stayed whole. Trees would fall and not decompose back, right ward and kirschvink. Instead, trunks and branches would fall on top of each other and the weight of all that heavy wood would eventually compress those trees into peat and then, over time, into coal. Had those bacteria been around devouring wood, 
they'd have broken carbon bonds, releasing carbon and oxygen into the air, but instead the carbon stayed in the wood. We're talking about a spectacular amount of carbon. Biochemist Nick Lane guesses that the rate of coal formation back then was 600 times the normal rate. Ward and Kirschvink say that 90%, yup, 90% of the coal we burn today, and the coal dust we see flying about Beijing and New Delhi, comes from that single geological period, the Carboniferous period. That's why it's called Carboniferous, because it produced so much carbon. The Carboniferous period was the time of forest burial on a spectacular scale. The writers say, take off your helmets and say thank you and therefore, in a just, and biologically aware, world coal miners everywhere would be doffing their helmets to salute the tardy arrival of those teeny earth creatures, the wood-eating bacteria by not being there 350 million years ago, and by not arriving for another 60 million years. Giant seams of black coal now warm us, light us, and muck up our atmosphere. Equal numbers of environmentalists might spend the day throwing darts at these little guys for showing up so lat. But enough of me talking about them. It's time for you to take a close, and I mean close, look at these amazing wood eaters. They come in many forms, but I'm choosing microbes called Trichinympha because they're so tiny, so squirmy, and so, well, crazily busy. They're single celled and can be found, yes, inside a termite gut. They look, says photographer Richard Howie who studies them, like teardrops, or pears wearing wigs. Here they are in this Nikon Small World Award-winning video by Danielle Parsons and Wonder Science. 